What's up, y'all? It's your girl EJ, and it is the long awaited day. All the Queen's men is back. Today is July the 20th, y'all, and it just happens to be my day of birth. Now, if you have been looking at the community tab, then you know that I'm going to be having a live birthday bash where we're going to be talking about all the Queen's men in live. I got all the squad with me, so definitely come and check that out. Now, although I was glad to see all the Queen's men come back, I do just need to say that BET Plus, y'all need y'all A double. Less whoop. Now we out here paying for this app and we need for y'all to get it together like seriously. So if you watch the episode already then beware that there is a big chunk of the episode missing right at the end of the episode and it happens on both episodes. Now let me just say this to be very clear you know we have the writer strike we have the actor strike and I feel like these networks just need to get it together. These are the people that are out here doing the day to Today, bringing these shows together and we know that these networks make a ton of money give the writers and the actors what they want so that we can get back to the business of TV you know what I'm saying like it's not that hard stop being greedy just give them what they want they're not asking for you know a whole lot like they're just asking for what they deserve and at the end of the day they have families to take care of they have things that they need to do so let's just do what we need to do but who did the editing like real talk somebody really dropped the ball on this editing and it was at the very best part the part that I really really wanted to see I wanted to see that car go into the building and blow up I wanted to see how this police chase was gonna go like I wanted to see all of this but no we didn't get to see any of that because clearly something happened y'all so anyway y'all I'm done with this rant and I'm sorry that I had to go on a almost two minute rant about this but it had to be said so anyway y'all this episode starts right where the last one left off and that is with your boy Amp and Midnight trying to get rid of this body, y'all. I do not understand for the life of me why they were trying to go dump this body out in the dumpster. Now, I know that typically this probably would have been the right call, but with everything going on, this was just not the play. Now, Midnight swears he didn't know that all this stuff was going on, but thank goodness your girl Dime comes through. And she is going to end up helping them, you know, because she don't want no more heat on the club because she ride or die for Madam. Now, the tense energy between her and Amp was just a lot. These two still have some unresolved issues and they really need to go ahead and figure this out and either move on or move on together because... Whew, they was just given a lot on this episode between these two. So anyway, y'all, we're going to see that Trouble and Rayshawn are going to actually pop in while they're trying to move this body while everybody is going back and forth. And <laughs> of course, they are kicked out. Now, this was a clip that they actually showed us from the beginning. So we actually already talked about that clip in quite detail. Now we're going to see that Midnight was not feeling Rayshawn and Trouble coming in there. He doesn't trust them. So he's definitely going to go and find them so that he can check them and make sure that these two are not going to say anything. Now kind of skipping ahead to when he actually finds these two, we're going to see them outside talking because their car is actually, for whatever reason, the car is having some car trouble. I mean, it's the perfect timing for that to happen. A Rayshawn is just like, I didn't see nothing. Like I'm like Rayshawn now on this bruh, I completely wholeheartedly 100% understand where you coming from. He like, I ain't see nothing. And then Trouble like, I know you saw that. And I'm just like, y'all two are doing the most. So anyway, Midnight comes out there and he brings them back into the club. And the way he clocks Rayshawn in the face, I ain't even gonna lie. That mess was fun knee but you know at the end of the day Rayshawn's like he didn't see nothing Trouble say she didn't see nothing but y'all already know that Trouble was always going to find her way into this somehow some way but for the first time Trouble actually does something good but too bad we didn't actually get to see it so Anyway, y'all, moving on. Now, I do just want to mention that Dime and Amp do have a conversation with each other. And Amp is like, you know, why don't you just take a picture and send it to the police? Like, he's just being extra like he always is. But, you know, you can't help but get the feeling that Dime still kind of has some feelings or something going on for him, you know, because you can just kind of tell. And then she's going to have a conversation with Big D at some point, And Big D is doing the most as well. He's your typical dancer and she calls him out on it she's like look I saw you go home with the girl in the with in the yellow dress and I know that it's just business and that she paid you and all that and now you want to come back here to me 
And I was with Dime 100%, and I loved how she called him out on that. Now, we are going to see that Fuego, of course, is going to be in the cell with Doc and Face, and they're all going at it. They're having a conversation. Well, there really ain't no conversation. They is really trying to charge him up. Now, Fuego is going to tell them, like, look, I ain't no B. You know what I'm saying? Fuego said he ain't just going to go out like that. Like, y'all just ain't going to come at him like this. Like, he is going to give y'all everything that he got. I see you, Fuego. Don't let them just come in there and try to punk you like that. But he tries to tell them, like, look, I didn't say anything, but yet he's still there. Madam sent them to do a job, and it is what it is at the end of the day. They take orders from Madam, and they do what she tells them to do. And even though I thought that it was a crazy move to try to take him out in the police station like this, this is what they were ordered to do, so this is what they try to do. Now, we are going to see in a scene later where Madam actually recants that, and she actually wants to get them moved out of there. She doesn't want to go through with it, which is a great idea. Thank goodness that she decided to do that. Now, speaking of that, we're going to see that her and Tommy are going to be in the car talking, and Casanova is going to get into the car, and she's going to basically tell him, like, look, I can double what you pay what you get paid at, you know, the police station if you're an inside man for me. Now, he's all like, I can't ruin my career, yada, yada, yada. I'm just like, bruh, you really ain't got no choices at this point. You need to do what you need to do because your career is over either way. At least you can get paid instead of losing. I mean, you still going to be a cop because she needs you on the inside, but now you actually get to get paid. Or the alternative is, is that you don't get paid and your career going to be over anyway because it is what it is. I'm just saying, I mean, people got choices and he got to make the right choice and, you know, and do what he got to do. But he says that he wants to think about it. You know, so there's that. Now, of course, Tommy still doesn't trust Casanova. He's just not with it. Uh, we are going to see what happened with Blue. Blue turns out she had on a vest, y'all. So that's what's up. I'm glad that she had on a vest. I remember saying something about that in one of my videos that I was hoping that she at least had on a vest with everything that was going on. Now, it didn't really look like she had on one, but, you know, Blue be wearing them snug shirts sometimes. So I guess we... I don't know. Whatever the case is, Blue had on a vest and she fell out the window. Looks like she fell to the ground there. Doesn't look like she went very far, so she must not live up real high. And a, a neighbor or somebody who's walking a dog comes by and Blue is just like, look, I'm good. And she wants to call the police. And then Blue ends up taking her phone. And it was so funny because she's like, you going to take my jitterbug? Man, I haven't heard jitterbug in so long. I didn't even know they still made them jitterbugs. But anyway, y'all, so I thought that was really cute. I love the little bit of comedic performances in this. There were several times when there were just things that were funny. And I've always enjoyed that about this television show because it does have so much drama and so much killing and so much violence, but yet it still gives you that little comedic relief. So I don't know. I like that part about it. Anyway, let me know what y'all thought about Blue and how she survived and having on the vest. Are you happy with how they played this out? I think it was realistic and I'm good with it. Now, we are going to see that Davis is going to say that she's close, but she needs a search warrant to get into the club. Casanova's like, look, you know, he's gained some trust with them and, you know, he's getting closer. But we all know that that's really not true. You know, at the end of the day, Casanova is going to have to side with Madam. Otherwise, he's going to die. Now, we already saw that scene where it looks like somebody's going to kill him. It looks like Big D is going to kill him. So maybe Casanova decided that, you know, he didn't want to do what Madam was asking him to do. I don't know. But, you know, Casanova seemed like the type that'll try to uh, flip the script anyway. Like, he'll still think that he can win somehow. But let's just be real. Detective Davis, Casanova, they all taking L's. And it just is what it is. Now, we are going to see that um, they are going to come up with a plan to move the body. Because when Dime finally gets a hold of Madam, Madam's like, look, call Blue. I don't want to deal with this. Now, I did forget to mention that when Madam got back home to her place it is like Fort Knox up in that thing so concierge isn't the only one that has a little bit of clout as well maybe madam doesn't have all the connections as high up as he does but the madam definitely surprised me with this I mean she has her own black op squad and she has all these people around now we can definitely tell that madam is shook by what the concierge is doing the fact that he's laying low and being quiet that does not sit well with her and she is just trying to protect herself 
himself. Now, we all know that Tommy feels a way about this. So he and Joey right from the jump are not going to get along because he feels like he's coming in on his territory. But had Tommy did what he was supposed to do, had he have done his job, this wouldn't be necessary. But people was getting close to Madam. Concierge walked right into her office. So there's that. So anyway, y'all, uh, moving back to uh, Detective Davis, she uh, is like she was about to go home, but then she gets a call. And so instead, she goes out on this call. Now, y'all know I was on this whole two minute rant earlier, and that's because we missed some of the key points at the very end that were important. You're, you're going to be able to see it in the next episode when it tells you what happened prior, but you don't actually see it in the episode so apparently when amp and midnight went to move the body because instead of them dumping the body in the dumpster they're going to take the body to Smokey, and Smokey apparently is the dumpster guy right and they're going to take the body to him but it's over an hour away so they're going to get the body into the car but they are going to get pulled over and Detective Davis is going to want them to open up the trunk. Now, keep in mind that I'm kind of just guessing what happened based off of the information that I saw in that trailer. I, of course, I didn't see the whole thing. And then there's going to be a moment where trouble is going to come through basically and save them. She's going to pull a Fast and the Furious moment, hit the car. And then when she does this, maybe that's when the, a police chase happens and they run the car into um, a store or something and the car blows up. And I guess this allows Amp and Midnight to get away. I don't know. That's my best guess. So y'all let me know what y'all think happened and all that good stuff. But pretty much this is where that episode ends. So let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Even though they had these hiccups, even though they definitely dropped the ball, I still enjoyed this episode. I still think that it was worth the wait. I really do hope that they get this fixed so that we can see the entire episode. I definitely hope that this was not how this was edited. Otherwise, that is a no-go for me. Like, I need to see the entire thing. So y'all go ahead and get the conversation started down below. Once again, do do not forget to join us tonight as we celebrate my day of birth and we talk about all the Queen's men and all the shenanigans that went down on episodes one and two. If you like this video, guys, make sure to go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to your girl channel if you haven't already. Turn on your notifications so that you do not miss out on any of my future All the Queen's Men content. Meanwhile, YouTube says that you just might like this video next, so go ahead and take a look. Until next time, guys, peace.